Viewer discretion is advised. What up, heel faction? Welcome back to heel shit. Why do we call it that? Because bad guys do heel shit. I'm Dark Chords. That's Draven Grimes. This is talking shit. We got the Epstein files. I had a little bit of craziness here a few minutes ago, and we had another fucking school shooting. We're going to get into it right after this. How you doing, man? Almost Friday. Turn, that, turn it down. You can have it on, but turn it down. It's pretty loud. Don't, don't, don't be badgering me. So what's I'll put my corn up as much so, as I want. So tell everyone why you've got the TV playing. Well, first off, it's not my TV. It's my lovely broke ass. Well, it's not broke. It's my flip phone. I love my flip phone. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> uh, so there was an announcement that there's going to be a major announcement made by Triple H tonight on this special 2024 preview. So... Just in case it happens while we're live. How long is that show sure supposed to be? An hour. Okay. Go figure. They just they just happen to run next to us. Their biggest competitor. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it was completely planned out this way. Sure. That's why they got punk on there now. It's the only reason. To tease me. That's the only reason. <laughs> the only reason. Uh, so. so yeah. uh, so I had a little bit of excitement here just a few minutes ago. I do tell. Um, so my daughter was babysitting, as she mm-hmm. does. As she does. And um, I'm in the shower, as I do. Oh. oh. That wasn't the excitement. Um, We're getting there. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I get out of the shower and I notice I've had like three missed calls for my daughter. It's like, what the hell is going on? And then as I'm looking at it, she calls again. Now this was after unsuccessfully trying to reach her mother because her phone doesn't get service in the dance studio that my other daughter is at. So by the time I answer the phone... She's fucking beside herself. She is crazy upset. Um, apparently, I think the baby she babysits is like two, two and a half, three, something like that. She's, she toddles. Um, but she had put something in her mouth and swallowed it. And then uh-huh. couldn't stop puking. Like like a sieve like just puking and and talia didn't see what uh what she put in her mouth and she was fucking panicking she called tried to call mrs cord she called me she called she she called one of the friends of the people that she was babysitting for Um, Mm -hmm. and then somewhere along the lines a a quarter hit the floor so, she, Shit. she swallowed a quarter, and I guess it didn't agree with her. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Now, listen. That happens to the best of fucking babysitters and to oh, the yeah. best of fucking parents. Of it only takes a split second for a fucking child to put something in her mouth. She she should not beat herself up over that shit. Oh, she she's not. Everything turned out okay, and she was she's fine now. But she was terrified at the time, like like a level I can't even imagine. You know, like oh shit, Jesus. I'm babysitting this kid, and it's about to die. <laughs> like, you're supposed to give Damn. it back, like you found it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, it's it's not a funny thing. It's not funny to it's make not. fun of, but yeah. Uh, as long as the baby's fine, she's fine. Everything's good. See, usually when you you come on here and say you got a, a story about your daughter, it's always minor. So it, it's it's kind of weird that we're not talking about minor. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's a cult leader in the making. Yes, she question. is. Without question. She's either going to be president or a cult leader, and I think her personality suits a cult leader much more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in this day and age, what's the fucking difference? She's really good at having people follow her. It is yet yeah. to be determined whether she figures out to use them for notorious or nefarious means. <laughs> uh, give it five years, you'll figure it out. Yeah. By, by graduation, you'll have it figured out. Yeah. So before we get into the Epstein list, I'd like to direct your attention to um, the links in the description or the panels around uh, around the video screen. Check out the new merch. The merch is beautiful. Beautiful. We've got the new yes, talking shit shirt. It says talking shit. Sometimes it hurts, and it's got your three boys. Um, Hurting. Talking painful shit. Hurting. Talking painful Hurting shit. Like motherfucker. Um, we also got some new TFK merchandise, uh, the Forbidden Kingdom. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing those. It's also, worth... got some retro TFK merchandise on tonight. Yep. It's worth checking out. Yeah. It is worth checking out. So, they released the highly anticipated Epstein files today. Yes, Dark. They, they jump what are the Epstein files? Well, it's a complete list <laughs> of everyone who visited Epstein Island. And let's go through this and shit. My um, God, at this fucking list. There's some that I anticipated, but there's there's two or three. I'm like, there ain't no fucking way. Crazy. You guys ready to hear this shit? Um... What's going on here? I think I sent them to you in alphabetical order, so just just start there, and if one catches your eye, we could talk about it. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name all of them, um, just the ones that have some kind of name recognition. So, all right, starting off, which I don't think is a surprise to anybody who knows this guy, is Prince Andrew, who is. One of the princes of in the royal family in England, and he's been known to be a little creepy. Uh huh. A little creepy. Okay. Um, the next big name on here, Kate Blanchett. Who is who exactly? She is a well-known actor, actress. Um, let me see what she's been in. Yes. Um, he was in uh, Thor Ragnarok, um, Ocean's Eight, um, the Robin Hood. She's been in a ton of shit. Die Hard Two. People. Been in a lot of shit. Um. All right. Naomi Campbell. Like, oh, okay, okay. I know who you're talking about. Okay. Like, what the fuck? Naomi, you know who Naomi Campbell is? Shut up, you ballas mutt. You know who Naomi Campbell Yes, I know who Naomi Campbell is. Yeah, she's a supermodel of supermodels. Um, <sighs> the least, the least uh, surprising name on here, Bill Clinton. <laughs> One of one of two, one of two, one of surprising two. names. David See, Copperfield. That one shocked me. He knows a little bit that about one. having a sex island, though. But still, he had his own sex island. All right, Alan Dershowitz, the the biggest named conservative attorney. Um. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. Like, how do you get yourself caught up in that shit? That came out of left field. Like, bro, you can get you anything. Think- you can get every piece of under 25-year-old ass there is out there. And he has. Consistently. Consistently. 
like if you go back and look at his dating what you doing going look at his dating history it's like once they hit a certain age and i can't remember the age it's like 25 or 27 or some shit like that he fucking drops and goes to another one oh no the age is 25 if you get it he will not date anyone over 25 <laughs> still he's been doing that consistently for decades for a why book. the fuck for ever absolutely um hold on a second what i uh, just look here. all right another shocker cameron diaz this one was the shocker for me we we almost had a 20 minute conversation this morning about it cameron fucking girl, diaz girl if, if you wanted some underage dick you had plenty of 90s babies in the 90s i'd be like mm, i'd give it to you and we won't fucking rat we don't rat no, he's giving us the sweet honey, and we're not gonna rat. Well, it ain't, we ain't no rats. We ain't rats. Um, but yeah, Cameron Diaz. I'm sure everyone knows who Cameron Diaz is. A list actress. If you um, don't know who the fuck she is, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Let's see. There's a shit ton of names here, but I don't recognize a lot of them. Al fucking <laughs> Gore. Al fucking Gore, like the most. I can kind of see it. The most vanilla milk toast motherfucker in the history of politics. <laughs> he is down there getting some strange. Seriously, what did you? How did you describe him? He's vanilla. What milk toast? <laughs> like just the blandest shit you could possibly think of. Oh my god. I can't believe Al Gore's on this fucking list. Oh, what the fuck? That's crazy. Um, one, one of the last ones on this list, like the very bottom, is another one of those what the fucks. Yeah. No, no, no. This, this is my what the fuck. Michael fucking Jackson. No. Michael fucking Jackson is on this list. That that's one of the easiest ones to believe. I I don't, I don't see why you're because this. they weren't serving up little boys on Epstein Island. He didn't care as long as it was a child. He didn't care if it was a boy or a girl. Creepy shit. Um God almighty. All right. <clears throat> um, all right. Who else do we got? Um by the way, we're gonna have a busy fourth of July weekend. Are we? Yeah, we got fourth of July on Thursday, we got SmackDown on Friday, Money in the Bank on Saturday, and NXT on Sunday. Good God damn. First announcement of tonight. Oh, it took that long to fuck out of CM Punk. Let's see. First, first time in my life I want him to shut up. Dude, it was a 15-minute interview that he said basically nothing. He didn't make an announcement? No, he was just on there to waste time, basically. Well, he will be at Raw this coming up Monday, but I already knew that. <laughs> Punk. Oh. Um... Let's see. <sighs> All right. So, um, who's the next big name here? Um, James Wolf. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tylee. The detective and the chief of police who were responsible <laughs> for investigating the sexual abuse allegations by children against Epstein. The detective what? and the chief that were investigating him for child sexual abuse or underage sexual abuse are on this fucking list. Two words. Cover up. God, Jesus Christ! What damn the fuck? it, man! God damn it! 
It gets worse, dude. It gets worse. Keep going. No, I am. Um... Now, mind you, there's over 150 people on this fucking list, so it would literally be three or four episodes for us to go through every fucking one. He's just picking the noticeable ones. Yeah. Virginia Roberts, who was the woman who accused Prince Andrew of sexual abuse. So, uh-huh. Prince Andrew was there. This might have been where it fucking happened. I don't know. Um... Possibly, but at this point, isn't it the uh, pot calling the kettle black? Mm-hmm. Kevin Spacey, which isn't too hard to wrap no, my head it's around. Not. No, it's um, uh, not. Donald fucking Trump. Another will no shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. That one was not a shocker. Not and at considering all. Considering he's he's already fucking fucking net deep and fucking legal shit as it is. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. <clears throat> of course he has his fucking staff all there. Let's of course. See. He's gotta have his posse. The doctor who treated Virginia Roberts, who was accusing Prince Andrew of sexual misconduct. That must have been a wild ass weekend. It must have been. Fucking Bruce Willis. That is my what the fuck. This hurt me. This hurt me. That, well, that you was mentioned rough, Die Hard bro. 2 earlier. So that was rough, bro. That was Yeah, rough. especially especially with everything he's going through now. Like Add this on top of all that. Like, half the time, he doesn't even know who the fuck he is. Yeah. Like, his dementia's gotten bad. It really has. It so. really has. Um, Yeah, that's fucking crazy, dude. One of my heroes. Yeah. And that's the last Die the Hard, list. Armageddon, Fifth Element. Jesus Christ. Die Hard is the greatest Christmas movie of all time. I don't give a shit what anyone says. I'll argue that point, and I'll say Lethal Weapon. If I was going to... If I'm picking a traditional Christmas movie, there's no doubt it's National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, without question. I'll still argue Lethal Weapon 1. Okay. It happened during Christmas. I wouldn't call it a Christmas movie. I mean, if you want to argue it enough, Batman Returns is a Christmas movie. Uh. (laughs) Yeah. All right. I said if you want to argue with him. I mean, it's a great movie. Mm-hmm. You know, Tim Burton did fucking great jobs with the Batman movies, but yeah, I don't, I don't have enough time to argue it. So but what do you think? One, I'll fight you any day of the week. So what do you think is going to happen with these uh, with this list? I don't know. Obviously, Trump is probably going to get some backlash from it because he's already in fucking legal trouble. Um, I'm sure he's already. Posting I don't. On I don't really see media. anything happening to like Bruce Willis or Cameron Diaz or Leo DiCaprio. Uh, at least with Cameron and Leo, you probably won't see them make a movie for quite some time. They'll probably just disappear. Uh, but but the ones that were close to Epstein, especially the the detective and the 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 sheriff or whatever that was involved in it, you're going to see some uh, legal ramification from it. Oh, I'm sure Trump is I mean, already in, posted. In some capacity, oh, I don't know about Trump. I, I don't, He's probably I already don't. posted that. I've never been on Epstein's Island. It, it's a false accusation. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Um. Well, let's also look at it from that point of view. Just because, you know, you're on that list and you were on the island doesn't mean you were you know guilty of any sexual misconduct that just says that you were on the island no so it course. could be something like that until you know something's proven and it's okay. until proven guilty absolutely absolutely no question. but when it's like bill clinton and and trump yeah and michael jackson <laughs> you touched them <laughs> 
Lord. What, what do you? Okay, two things. First off, how do you feel about this list? I know, I know, some were shockers, some were not. And and B, since you're you're more into the the legal game than I am, what do you see coming from this? Um. I think you'll see an investigation. I think you'll definitely see those two cops, like, their career will be over and they'll probably go to prison, you know? Mm -hmm. Let me just lay it out more for any of you guys who came in. We're talking about the Epstein list. The detective and the chief of police who were investigating Epstein for child sexual abuse... Mm-hmm. Is on the list of Epstein Island guests. Yes, that's fucking egregious. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable stuff. Um, if mommy's looking good tonight. If uh, I don't think anything. Well, I don't think anything will happen to Bruce Willis because I don't see him doing any more movies. He doesn't have the cognition. Um, you might. So see, you don't. You don't see anything. You know any legal ramification as far as Bruce comes. Like even if they just try to take it to court. Um. I think. I don't know. <coughs> He, he could, I mean, yeah, it could, if it came down to that, if they found that he definitely, yeah. I mean, right now, that list just makes you kind of side-eye them. Like, hmm. Right. Um, but if, if, and I don't know who would even investigate that, because it sounds like it's in international waters. I, I don't know. Um mm. No. You know the laws better than I do about that. Yeah. Oh. It's a it's a crazy fucking list, dog. Crazy fucking mm-hmm. list. Now, it's not been confirmed, but I was reading uh, another article saying that that wasn't the entire list. Like, there's still more documents that the courts have not released yet. God damn. So there could be more names coming up. I wonder if these are the worst ones. I mean, if Bruce Willis is the worst one, I mean, I, I, I don't fucking know. I mean, the biggest named ones, not the worst one. Uh, for, as far as the biggest name, yeah. I mean, I guess you can't get honest, much bigger honestly, than... Honestly, I was, I was kind of... I kind of thought Ron Jeremy's fucking name was going to pop on that goddamn list. I ain't going to lie. I don't think it was fat-ass leaves Las Vegas. For for a nookie, he will leave. Um, is shit. that motherfucker even still alive? Uh huh. Oh shit! I mean, what? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't, you know, read the porning news. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just got it scrolling in that center screen. In that center screen. That's right. Um, let's see. All right, well, that that kind of thus endeth the episode <laughs> list. But God damn it, man! We're gonna we're gonna bring this up with Thump the next time he's on and get his opinion on it because I'm sure he's got plenty to fucking say. God damn right, though. God damn right. God damn right, Bobby. Bobby. Damn right, Bobby. Bobby. Let's see. All right. Well, let's hear from Casto Vodka, and then we'll come back with this fucking school shooting. We'll be back. God damn it. Vodka evolved. Castell. Indulge in the Red Revolution. All right. So, there's no easy way to pull the uh, bandaid off of this one. Today, pull it it off. Perry High School in Iowa. 
school shooting. A 17-year-old killed a 6th grade student and wounded five other people near Des Moines, Iowa. And then the mm-hmm. coward turned the gun on himself and ended it. Obviously, you know, arts go out to the families. It's yes. an unbelievable unbelievable horror that you would go through in a situation like that. Um, it's it's despicable. And that's that's being light. Yeah. Um rest in peace to the you know, to the young man who was who was murdered. Yes. By this and terrorist. Also prayers. Because that's what prayers he is. Family. He's a fucking everybody. terrorist. Um yeah. here's the thing. Pump action shotgun and a small caliber handgun. Um, they also found explosives in the building, which I'm sure he was going to um, either try to blow up a class or blow himself up when the cops come in. Or I mean, this is all speculation. Obviously, I don't have any idea. Yes. But Obviously, it's really fresh, and they don't have everything as far as information. But here's the thing. A, this kid that that decided to do this horrendous fucking crime. Obviously, we don't know if he's been diagnosed with any mental disorder. Um, if he has, why hasn't he been looked at more closely? Because as, as a as a parent who has um, a child who with mental disabilities, um, autism. He's also bipolar, schizophrenic, so wrap all that in a fucking package. You you would figure parents would be a lot more uh, attentive uh, as to what he does, what he doesn't do. Like, for instance, at at least with me and my wife, um, when it comes to our son, anytime like something's like slightly off, we we take attention to it and we and we try to figure out why. Is is this kid like one of those kids that was, you know, here's the phone, this is gonna raise you. Here's the fucking controller, this is gonna raise you, just leave us the fuck alone, kind of thing. Um if that's the case, I'm I I've gotta place some blame on the parents there. Um yeah. Yeah. As a parent, <coughs> You're supposed to be very attentive to what your child does, no matter if, if they have a disability or a mental illness or anything like that. You're always supposed to, in some form and capacity, know what your kid's doing, knowing what your kid's watching, knowing what your kid's reading, writing, whatever. Um, now, I can't say shit. You know, 12, 13 years old, Halo, Call of Duty. Gears of War. Oh my god, I could put countless hours into Gears of War. But I never thought about fucking going and shooting up a goddamn school on it. Ding ding ding. <clears throat> yeah. I never I never once thought of, oh, I'm gonna go get that shotgun and take it down the fucking road and just like shoot up an apartment. I mean, fuck no. No. Like it's... something something's happened in, in, in between my generation and this generation. Of where common sense is not fucking taught. No, common yeah. sense is, is is no longer uh, a stable of a household, and it's fucking sickening. Because you know we we've had this debate many times about guns. In my opinion, a gun does not kill a person. I set a gun down right on this desk. That gun will not do nothing. It will not fucking fire. It will not discharge. It will not fucking rack a rack around. It won't do shit. It's always in the hand of the person. Now, how did he get a hold of these fucking weapons? Did he have a fucking parent that had these fucking weapons? Were they not locked up in a safe properly? Were they just laying around? Did he get them from a friend? What have you? Like so many fucking variables. Um, I will say, yes, I am a parent that has weapons in the house. Mm -hmm. My guns are locked up in a safe and you need a nine digit combination to get to it. Uh, only two people 
breathing in this world know that combination so if at any point in time one of my guns is found and it ain't me i know the exact person that's like i'm fucking going to but regardless if you're going to have guns in the house have have enough fucking sense to teach proper handling of a fucking weapon like my my 10 year old daughter love her to death my 10 year old daughter can take my personal sidearm well god damn it that's always fun to be right in the middle of a fucking story and then probably your laptop die there i am what the fuck I don't fucking know. Stream lives just don't like me this week. Bro, it was perfect anyway, on your phone. What I think we need to I know do... I'm rambling. Hold on. What I think we need to do, start doing, is get that tripod and do it on your phone and have the laptop for, like, researching and looking up stuff. <coughs> well, if you want to give me, like, two seconds to switch over, I can do that. All right. All right. So yeah. let me get that done. All right. I'm going to jump off. Let me go ahead and get, get the email pulled up on my phone. All jump. right, I'm jumping off. All right. All right. That better? It is. All right, cool. So, let, me, let me get that angle right. How'd yeah. you know it was on the tripod? Huh? How'd you know my phone was on the tripod? I didn't. I just I figured your Here phone was there to look stuff up on. You can use your laptop for that. And I was the, just watching the cock. Just watching the cock. I mean, it's so much better. Like, I don't know why... The phone connection is so much better than your in-house connection. I don't know. Probably because my laptop's are like a cheap-ass $150 when I got a $1,200 phone. That Good might thing. have something to do with it. That might well, you know what? When you live in fucking poverty, you do the best you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Anyway, um, but, like but, I was saying, mm -hmm. like I was saying about my daughter real quick before we move on. No, oh, sure. Oh, we're staying my, on my, this for a bit, for a minute. Yeah. Well, I, I know you, you got a piece you want to say, but uh, as far as like my kids, e even my autistic one, he, he knows proper usage. He knows when to use it and when not to use it. Like, obviously, he does not know the things my other two children do because, you know, with all his mental disabilities, I don't want to fucking test those waters. But you know, when it comes to my daughter, she can fill strip a fucking firearm and fucking like that. Like nice. it's fucking amazing. Very and cool. You you ask her point blank about a, a a certain scenario, she will fucking give you like almost with military strategy the appropriate fucking answer. So it, it really again falls back to the fucking parent. Where the fuck is my peacock? Where's my peacock? You turn my peacock off of my phone, I gotta put it on my laptop. Hmm. Uh, Watching the yeah. cack. Oh, I want to know what this major announcement is by Triple H. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's worth checking it out and relaying it on there. Yes. But getting back to the gun stuff. Yes. I, I think I've said my piece. So, it is the fourth day of the year. January 4th. <laughs> we haven't finished the fourth day of the year yet. This was the second school shooting and the fourth mass shooting in America since the start of the year. Mm -hmm. That's fucking disgusting. And it's... <sighs> I don't know, man. Uh, 
Hey, what'd you test? It's you say the parents are partially to blame. Parents are mostly to fucking blame. All right, because parents don't know shit about their own kids anymore. Not wrong. They 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 come home. (laughs) They probably don't even eat dinner at the same table. You know, the kid's doing his thing. The working parents are doing their thing. You know, there's they don't know what's going on with their kids. They don't know what the, their mind state is. They don't know really if they've been acting fucking crazy. You know, mm-hmm. these are it. I don't know when people just started being baby makers and stopped being parents. Because that's that's what's fucking happened. Is like, yeah, you you can you can birth a child, but you're letting the entire world raise it. Pretty right. much. And, and and I've heard the whole the whole saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. I'm not disagreeing with that, but it takes the right fucking people to the right people. People that care about the well being of the child. Back in the back then, villages were like that. Yes, the world ain't like that anymore. You got to have specific, tested, hand-picked people to be helping mold your child. You can't have Roku and Twitch raise your fucking kids. And you know, it's it's become so. It's almost like it's in vogue or in fashion to revel in your depression and your you know uh, autism i don't i mean they're probably not autistic but they a lot of people are like they they call it their superpower like mental health problems are not a superpower bro that's like that leads you to shoot schools up yeah it also it also really depends on how how you Again, raise your fucking child. Like, for example, my child, my son, has zero common sense. I love him to death. Has zero fucking common sense. But you're talking about fucking book smart. He's a fucking borderline genius. You can give him a fucking algebra two problem right now at twelve years old, and he can fucking solve it. He can't tell you how he solved it. But he can look at it and know the fucking answer. Dude, that's Rain Man shit right there. Yeah. So, ever, I mean, you ever throw him down a bunch of matches like that, and see if he can tell you how many there are? I'm not going to give him a bunch of fucking matches. You lost your mind. That motherfucker's a pyro. All right. Uh, toothpicks. Oh, yeah. Let, let him fucking acupuncture my ass. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But no, yes, I've done something similar where, like, I've counted out a certain amount of like Hot Wheels cars and I poured them out. And he told me the fucking number within like 12 seconds. He just looked at him and said, there's that many cars. Now, dudes with fucking autism, he had to line all the motherfuckers up perfectly afterwards, but he gave me the fucking answer. Like, I don't know. It's crazy. Still, parents, what the fuck are y'all guys doing? Yeah, man. And I'm not saying all parents are bad. There, there are parents like us who fucking, you know, mind their children, tend to their children, all that shit. But there's some who just, you know, throw a fucking tablet or a laptop or throw them on a TV, and that they they expect that to raise their child. No, and it's those fucking children. I'm intrusive. We're intrusive. Like we go into their rooms and sit there and talk with them and see what the hell they got going on in there. We, mm-hmm. we, you know. Well, they're both girls, so they're, you know, teenage girls and they're emotional, but we you know, are they? do our best to, you know, just. Um, and that's the thing with my kids. All of mine are very fucking open and very outgoing. Like, they don't rely on fucking phones and tablets and TV and shit. Like, getting them to actually sit down and fucking watch a movie is like torture to them. Unless it's like a movie that just came out they really want to fucking see. For the first 45 minutes, they'll shut the fuck up. After that, they're talking. Like, they're just very outgoing kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's a fucking, that's something that's dying. Like, 
Remember back in our day when like everybody by fucking 12 o'clock in the afternoon on the weekends were out meeting up, fucking just having the time of their fucking life. Now you mm-hmm. you barely see that. Yeah, no. Right. Like, like before uh when we moved here to the, the apartment complex, I didn't see any fucking kids out fucking playing at all. Mm-hmm. But when my kids moved in, within two fucking weeks, my, my youngest son has a fucking posse now. Nice. Like you you swore he's a fucking ringleader or some shit. Like he's like he is throwing fucking like Kool Aid packets and fucking pixie straws on the side for some fucking hustle money. Like but mm. that, that's what we need. We need those kind of kids. We need them back outside. Use your imagination. Mm. Grow some common sense. And it's not impossible. You know, it's not like I mean, we both have full time jobs. It's not like we're stay at home parents. So it, it yeah. is possible. You know. Yeah. I mean, if you if you include the podcast, I mean, we work two full time jobs. Yeah, like it, it's a lot more than just us jumping on here an hour three times a week. Like, there's a lot of stuff off air that you don't see that we do. Yeah. <laughs> so this sure. this between our jobs and this, this takes up like eighty five percent of our time, and we still make time for our kids and our families. Mm-hmm. It's not fucking impossible. No, it's really not that hard if you can fucking do time management well enough. I agree. Uh, well, back to this fucking story. Now it's um, definitely easier now that uh, they're old enough to like fend for themselves. Like I don't have to. Um, what's the word? You don't have to get up every fucking couple hours to feed them and stuff like that. Well, yeah. not just that, but I don't have to. Uh, other than waking them up for school, I don't have to get them ready anymore. Like I don't have to remind them when to walk out the door. Like they're. They're pretty self-sufficient. I don't even have to do that. They have alarm clocks. They know what time they got to get up. Like it's oh well, of course my autistic son, but he's up with me when I get up for work anyway. Like his bus comes right when I have to leave for work, so like it's clockwork. Mm-hmm. But my other two, oh yeah, I ain't got to tell them shit. You ain't got to tell them to get up. You ain't got to tell them to go to bed. Like school night, they know eight thirty bed. End of discussion. Don't <laughs> try to fight it. All right. But get a fucking kid to do a chore around this house? Oh my god. That that is World War Four. Good sir. Yeah. Especially if it's the kitchen after I've had a, a wild hair up my ass and I decided to make something fucking nice. And I, I destroy a kitchen. I ain't gonna lie. I will use every fucking utensil, every fucking pot I can. It means we're gonna have a great fucking meal. <laughs> you're gonna fucking enjoy it, and then you're gonna clean that shit up. Right. It's your night. There you go. Oh. But back to this fucking story. You, you said uh, how many school shootings since twenty four started? Two. And, then, and it's only- and now, mind you, most places didn't go back to school until at least Tuesday. You know, yes. at the earliest Tuesday. So you're talking about. M- Three days of school, there have been two fucking school shootings in this country. And, and that, four okay. mass shootings total. You know, and that is a fucking shame, dude. Fucking <laughs> disgusting, man. It's embarrassing. Like, like yes, I, I completely agree with you that guns themselves don't kill people. Um, yes. I can... But... When, when they can, when no matter how young you are, you seem to be able to get a hold of fucking guns. If the gun wasn't there, he'd what have a knife and maybe injure one or two people before he got shut down. Like it, it's it's a situation, man. It's 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 like letting heroin be out and like letting addicts I, I don't know man like trusting them not to not to not to inject this you know it's like it's self defeating man it's, it's... So, ba- so basically it's like us going to a buffet and they're telling us not to eat well, yeah Pretty something much. like that something like that you'll that, be here for an hour 
I've been for for an hour eating. Fuck you. <laughs> As you know, when you eat Chinese, you're gonna be hungry again. So might as well wait around. You know. That's that's why if we go. <laughs> I know we're getting all fucking topic. Goddamn, we always do. But like back when Golden Corral was good, and it wasn't that good. So go back a few years. We would always go like right before the dinner rush. Get the lunch price and then get the fucking dinner shit. Yeah. I don't know if you're old enough to remember Quincy's. That bitch, fuck you. That fuck was you, the man. fucking buffet fuck place. Dude. Dog. That was dude. the best. When I was doing Taekwondo in Panama City, that for some reason, like most of our tournaments ended up in Panama City. There was a Quincy's 10 minutes away from the venue that they did the tournaments. And every time, and my grandmother told me this. Go figure. If you get a medal, we will go to Quincy's. Nice. Bitch, guess who beat the shit out of motherfuckers for Quincy's? Yes. Yes, I remember fucking Quincy's, dude. That was my... And it's fucking weirdest shit ever. It's one of my earliest memories of food. But it's... it's Quincy's is where I, I learned my love of pasta and gravy. I don't Seriously? understand why. Yeah, like they just had like this thing and it had like uh, fettuccine noodles and like brown gravy. Mm. Like right there. And I was like, I want to try that. And they're like, no, that was the end of it. That, that's where the abdominals became flat abdominals in my life. Dude, I remember because I don't even remember how, how old I was when they closed down. But there was all there was one that stayed open longer than any of them around here. It was in New Smyrna Beach. And we mm -hmm. we used to go down there every summer, um, <laughs> and God, it was great. But the problem is, like at the time, it was like what ten dollars or whatever, uh, uh, six seven dollars. Yeah, it was like that. Um, like... But I would eat like fifty cents worth of food because it would be like macaroni and cheese and like. The starchy shit that doesn't cost anything. Yes. <laughs> the fucking rolls. Oh my god. I would go there for the rolls, the chili, and the mac and cheese. Chili was mm. fucking phenomenal. Now, now they had um, they had candied bacon at the one I went to in Panama City. Oh lord. And I would devour that shit. Good oh, lord. special. No, no, no. Remember Shoney's? Like, I know there's still a few open up towards the north, but, like, down here, it's fucking extinct. Fucking Shoney's breakfast bar. Dude, yeah. Fuck that. Dude, that. Yeah, Quincy's would open for breakfast on the weekends, I think, wouldn't they? Yes, um, they would, but I, but unfortunately, you know, I never got there on breakfast, so I, I never was able to have it. I gotcha. Yeah, and when uh, Golden Corral started doing breakfast when I was younger, that was a big deal. Yeah, and and uh, I'll say it. Their breakfast is better than their lunch and their dinners. Yeah. See, that's the problem with me is I like breakfast food better than I like lunch food, <laughs> which fucks up my uh, intermittent fasting because I can't make it past breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> well, now if you can go down to the old Waffle House, you can get breakfast anytime you want do that or i hop or denny's or uh, what <laughs> uh doesn't grumpies do breakfast until they close yeah well there you go well that requires me to leave the house like they don't door i gotta work they don't door that actually yeah they might oh shit god damn it we're in something. trouble you're in trouble yeah you're in trouble <laughs> I've, I've learned quickly since moving back to the city DoorDash is my worst enemy Especially since 90% of the restaurants Are literally a 5 minute walk From my house And I just refuse to fucking go I'm telling you <laughs> I'm telling you I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get these Extra charges on the food And then fucking tip somebody to go get my food for me <laughs> Instead of Taking 5 minutes to walk over there and get my food yeah, it's fucking bad. Yeah, that's all right. I order from fucking fast food place across the street. I don't know. <laughs> About the creature comforts, man. It is. 
And you got a Culver's like right there at your house, dude. Hey, Culver's, Whataburger, <laughs> Chick fil A, all right across the street from here. I know. Asshole. Meanwhile, I got I got the Colonel, I got Woody's, I got Hardy's, and I got Waffle House right across the street. Woody's, did you say? Yeah, Woody's. Barbecue? Yeah. Dude, there hasn't been a Woody's anywhere near me in years. There's one in Oak Leaf. I think that's the closest one to you. Dude, they used to be everywhere, but now Bono's is like taking over. Dude, fuck Bono's. They got some garbage ass barbecue. It's better than nothing. But they make a bomb ass burger. The 1949 will... burger is amazing at Bono's. Listen, listen I, I have a barbecue place five minutes from my house, and I will still drive. 45 minutes to go to Sonny's. That should tell you something. Well, God damn it. Yeah, their their quality's not like it used to be. Yeah, no, I know. I like Sonny's, though. Oh, well, well, you kind of have to when we go on road trips. Oh, yeah, of course. I used to destroy some all-you-can-eat. Yeah. Like, when oh. I was coming out of high school, when I was, you know, still pretty jacked and everything, I would just yeah. go there and destroy... <laughs> Dude, that was me and my little brother every Friday when we got off work when we was doing the construction last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Straight to fucking Sunny's, and we'd sit there for about an hour and a half and just, just devour ribs and sliced pork. Fucking just straight devour. Dude, I think me and my my friend brought poured, pulled pork to Sunny's. Like, because the first time I'd had pulled pork was in Orlando at a spot uh, Smoky Bones. Uh huh. It was the first, and I, they had never had it around here at all. And then we were like, every time we would go, because Sunny's our favorite place, like mm -hmm. every time we would go, we'd be like, y'all need pulled pork, y'all need pulled. Finally got it. <laughs> Same with the mustard sauce. Oh, dude, that mustard sauce is like a berry. Mm -hmm. Uh. Dude, knows his place up in Georgia. And it, it's about a 15-minute trip from where I'm at now. Mm. It was called Shack by the Track. And they would sell pulled pork in, like, styrofoam cups. Like, from, like, little 16 ounces all the way to, like, 64-ounce cups. Oh, and that 64-ounce cup was only, like, 10 bucks. And you get half a loaf of bread with it. So, obviously, when I smoked, it did not survive. That's the best fucking pulled pork I've ever had. They, that house sauce, house rub, everything from fucking scratch. For me, when it comes to sauces, sunny, all of Sunny's sauces are the best. Um, the mild sauce. I don't like this original bullshit that they have now, but the mild sauce mm -hmm. was the best. Um, yeah. Yeah, now, now you have to fucking ask for it. It's fucking yeah. Bullshit. Which is retarded. The sweet man. sauce. That, that sweet sauce is fucking. It's almost sugar at this point. Like, I know it's supposed to be like sweet, but like, it's getting too sweet. Yeah. Agreed. How do we start doing culinary critiquing of barbecue places? Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know. Uh, you were. Shizzo, you were... stop laughing over there. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm hungry. We were... <laughs> we were on the whole, uh, I don't know, but we went to like this thing where I said, so it's like going to a buffet and telling us not to eat. And then I said something about Woody's across the street. And then, yeah, it, it just fucking spiraled. Mm, mm. Quincy's wasn't involved. Golden Corral was involved. Quincy was involved, yeah. Goddamn Quincy's, man. Fucking Goddamn rolls. Quincy's. Good Lord. Shoney's. Good stuff. <laughs> Fuck world. You got a time machine yet? So we go back to the nineties. You want to know old? You remember Western Sizzler? Oh my god, yes. You motherfucker, dude. You motherfucker. I think the last time I ate there, I was like five. Yeah. So crazy. Fuck. These fucking places. I mean, I'm sure they're not nearly as good as we we fantasize that they are at this point. Like, no, we, Quin we, Quincy's. Quincy was the bomb. I don't, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. But, like, 
Like, is was Western Sizzling really that good if it went out of business? Like, how do you? Mm. Well, it was, it was, I mean, it was probably dog meat that they were passing off the steak, but that was good fucking dog meat. Fuck. Uh, oh, fuck. <sighs> Welcome to uh, <laughs> the Food Welcome Nostalgia to Hour. Yeah, right. The Heal Shit oh, Podcast. Yeah. Okay, we did fucking waste about 15 minutes on that. <laughs> what do you want from fucking uh, Epstein's Files to the school shootings to. Yeah. Well, we had. I'm kind of glad we did to kind of bring everybody down from that school shooting story. Yeah. That was rough, man. Fucking. Yeah. And it's only going to get worse. I'm sure by the time uh, we have Thump back next week, there's going to be another dumb motherfucker who wasn't fucking loved properly. Fuck. Yeah. It's fucking depressing. It's it's those. It's these kind of shows that I'm like. I really don't want to fucking do talking shit unless we're just like having a good time. But then again, you know, I wouldn't have known about this shit unless you brought it up. And not a lot of fucking news uh, reporters are fucking reporting it. I saw uh, NBC News report it in passing. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But, uh, Chizzo, you want a shawarma sandwich, huh? Oh, shawarma. Have you ever had shawarma? I have not had shawarma. Uh, there's a shawarma place in Orange Park Mall. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly sure Is that's it not like kind of like Brazilian barbecue, where they just slice the meat off. Yeah, something like that. The tahini taste? sauce. It doesn't work. Uh, the tahini sauce is fucking phenomenal. I could lather myself up in it and just fucking be happy. <laughs> to be, the tahini sauce is fucking great. Um. Yeah, there's a place in the mall that I'm pretty sure is not like legitimate like shawarma, but it's it's loosely based. So I mean, is if you it want like, like a sit down place or like one of the it's in the food, food court. Oh, it's in the food fashion. court next to to where I get my Japanese noodles. But their lamb is fucking good, and I didn't think I liked lamb. But lamb is good. Lamb is good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll look into finding like a legitimate shawarma place in Jacksonville. Hopefully uh, by next Wednesday. And maybe we can hit that place up. Yeah. I've been to Brazilian barbecue a few times. We always get the meat sh- meat sweats. Dude, for those prices, you've got to get the meat sweats. Or it's yeah. not worth it. Bro, what is it, like 60 bucks a person? Something like that? Well, yeah, but if you go during the lunch thing, it's like 40. And you get the same <laughs> shit. Right. Right. And, yeah. and, and knowing my dumb ass, I forget about the little green cozy that you got to fucking flip over to red for it to stop. So it never fucking stops. And I'm sitting over like, oh, fuck, help me. Steak? I'm like, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on, bro. Shizzo, did you really ask about couscous? We're sitting here talking about meat and how delicious meat is. And you bring this vegetable out, this barley-infused vegetable. Ugh. Couscous. Do I, the food's do I so nice, like they that? named it twice. You want to look like a fucking rabbit to you. <laughs> hey, what's up, Doc? <laughs> Bitch, I ain't no goddamn rabbit. I'm a goddamn carnivore. <laughs> I'm also from the South, so we consider macaroni and cheese a fucking vegetable. So, Let's see how fucked up we are. Yeah, bro, I know what couscous is. It, yeah. It doesn't... My wife <laughs> likes it. Like, I... She likes it barley. Like, barley, too. Like, I don't get that shit. It's an acquired taste. We did not acquire it. <laughs> cheeseburger. <laughs> oh, we can kill a fucking There is nothing better than a good cheeseburger, guys. Nothing. Yeah. I don't know if y'all get good cheeseburgers in other countries, but... You you cannot beat a good cheeseburger. You've seen Demolition Man, right? Yeah. Okay. Anytime I think of somebody having a cheeseburger in another country, yep. I think about that so scene. Where you're, goes, so while you're speaking my language, talking about cheeseburgers and pizza, that's what uh, I'm talking about, homie. With the couscous, you gotta you gotta step it up, man. We we uh, we eat fattening, artery clogging foods here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of pizza, though. I'm really not. Oh, dude, I could eat pizza all the time. Yeah, uh, I can't. Like, I also grew up with that shit, like almost every fucking day. And then my first marriage, 
like six times a week it was pizza like i got pizza out real quick and then you know working at pizza Hut for fucking seven years that kind of kills it too yeah. yeah but if you can find me a good legitimate chicago deep dish i will annihilate that no dude god we need to that's where we need to go um there's a uh, Chicago deep dish place on the uh, w- west side. Yeah, it's on Collins, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I know which one you're talking about. I'm the one that told you about it. Oh, we have enough time Wednesday. Uh, we'll go. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been fucking fantastic uh, spending an hour or so with you guys. Um, Mr. Couscous, uh, go acquire better taste in food. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna go munch on this chicken and steak I made for dinner with some fucking uh, air fried potatoes that are fucking phenomenal and uh, yeah that's how I'm gonna finish off my night uh, don't forget this Sunday uh, HSP 8 o'clock Eastern 7 uh, standard time whatever the fuck it is uh, we will have Billy Sharp as well as another talent from a company called new wave out from alabama they will be joining us uh, as we discuss a former promoter that thought it would be fucking cute to try to fuck us over so tune in for that as well as january 14th we will have a pro wrestling icon shane mercer on with us that's going to be fucking phenomenal uh looking forward to that one and uh, if you're in the Jacksonville, Florida area uh, next Wednesday night and you're going to AEW Dynamite, come find your boys. We're going to be there uh, repping, representing the Hillship Podcast. Uh, see if we can get a couple interviews. Uh, get some fans out. But yeah. We're going, to, we're going to have some good times. All right. Well, thank you, Shizzo and Shalaw, for that good uh, food combo. And fuck um, you, Coos See you back here Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And we're going to have, like Draven said, that's going to be an explosive one. So you'll definitely want to check that out. So Yeah, we, we have been, like, wanting to talk about it all fucking week. But it's been, it's one of those things where we're just holding it back. And we and we just can't hold it back no more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, all right, guys. Well, for Draven Grimes, I'm Dark Chords. This has been Heel Shit. Why do we call it that? Because bad guys do heal shit. See you later.